But um, the, the sad thing about that whole parade, I think it was, a, it was a rehearsal for the troupe in the colour. So it was probably an early morning rehearsal. And when you play the piccolo, you have to tie, there's four reins on a horse and you have to tie them up and you have to wrap them on a loop around your wrist and then you play like this, but the horse moves and you kind of get used to moving. But I never trained to do that because in the riding school, you, although it's changed a bit in, in these days, but in those days, they never trained you to ride with your instrument until you passed out and then you got to the band. So I was riding down the mile, but the reins were too short. So I was like this. And after four hours of trying to sit like this and play with the horse getting really annoyed with me bashing his mouth. I was cantering, I was trotting. It was the most uncomfortable experience of my whole life. So the glamour of riding out was one thing, but the unglamorous aspect of getting off my horse with an extremely sore bum uh, was not particularly pleasant. So it was a memorable first occasion, and I can only say it got a lot better after that. But I, I tell you one of the naughtiest things I actually did, I think I can get away with this. I remember we have a, had a room inspection and it was one of a number of room inspections we seemed to have continuously and we hadn't cleaned one of the windows, I noticed, by my bed space. And I figured, oh, here we go again, we're going to get into trouble, we're going to have to reshow this at 10 o'clock, just for we didn't clean a window. So I thought, you know what, I'll give them something to, rather than a little dirty mark, I'll give them a handprint. Why not? So I opened the curtain, I stuck my hand on the window, and for whatever reason, my hand went through the window. It wasn't deliberate, and I cut all my hand up. And of course, that distraction, and the window breaking while I was cleaning the window, got us out of the problem of not having done the room properly. I ended up with a few stitches in my hand, and everybody thought it was hilarious. So I think that was, that was really funny. But We're told that we would have to run an ambulance. It's like, huh? How do we do that? Now, of course, you may have already come across this, but musicians in those days were trained as medics as well, RMA3 medics. And we had a role in war, should, should the case be needed, that we were going back up a field ambulance or a field hospital. And in 1990, I think it was, the ambulance service went on strike and the military had to kick in. So they got drivers from the driving regiments they, and got medics from the musicians because in those days the medics I don't think had as much or they didn't do it. So I ended up suddenly at Chelsea Barracks in the old Chelsea Barracks training for about three days maybe <laughs> on um, a green ambulance of how to um, respond to an incident and to go and pick up a casualty and take that casualty to a hospital. And we were sent to various different locations around London. My first one actually was in Felton, just down the road. Um, and then I had the pleasure of doing Hackney and King's Cross, which created slightly different um, situations. But I mean, life learning, my goodness me, from, from the most extreme accidents to abuse, to overdoses, to car accidents, to all sorts of things. And uh, you grew up very quickly in the back of an ambulance when the radio and the policeman said, OK, we're going to take this call, we've got this incident, and you'd be going, I've never done a heart attack, how do we deal with this? And you get your book and you'd be going, OK, what you do is when you arrive, and, and you'd be practising in the back of the ambulance, racing around London, trying to get the confidence to go and deal with the situation. So in 1990, I was 18, 1920, 21. That was, that was really, really tough work. Very enjoyable work in, in reflection, but it was quite, quite a big experience for me. Yeah, I can tell you one really, it's just come in my mind, absolutely brilliant one. I was at Hollywood Palace um, doing Duke of Edinburgh's Gold Awards. Um, and they also had them at St James's Palace as well, but Scotland would have their own and the Duke of Edinburgh would come up to Hollywood. It's usually around the time that the Queen spends a holiday there in July. 
and he would host a garden party for the gold award winners in the, in the thing. And, and is what is customary in royal garden parties, you have a band. And in Scotland, there's only one band. It's a bit smaller. And um, the same people travel from Buckingham Palace to Hollywood, so you know the same people are going to give you those signals. And, and everything is signalised because um, where the royal comes out of a certain door, you don't normally see, so you have to sort of trust somebody to give you the signals to play the national anthem. You have a band stood by, there's silence, we're waiting, we know that it's nearly three o'clock or whatever time it is, the heartbeat's going a little bit, you don't want to get this wrong, a national anthem in the wrong place is, is just, you never want that on your watch. And um, the guy, I can't remember his position, but the guy that I know is Lieutenant Colonel retired, but the guy who normally gives that signal couldn't do it on this particular day, and he said to me, but I've got this chap here who's going to, or it's a lady I think, who's going to do this for us. We just need to check what the communication is to play. And I said, well, we normally have a hand up and then when it drops, that's, that's the thing to play. So they're watching on a little mound and they're watching the, the door and when the roll gets to the step, the hand drops, I do the rolls. So she has an umbrella. She's standing on the little mound that's just at the back, we're at the back of the garden party, it's no problem. I have my fingers up ready for the, the timpani and the side drum and the bass drum to roll, to get everybody ready. Got the baton up waiting. She looks at me and I, I'm looking at the door, but I'm going, I'm really not sure. I'm really not sure about Duke of Edinburgh. I can't, and I could see him coming out. She drops the umbrella, Poof, roll, but I'm looking and going, he's, not, he's definitely not come out. So rather than start, I just sort of, and the jog stops, and then she goes, oh, sorry, sorry, I scratched my nose. <laughs> so the umbrella went back up, and then I could see, and thank goodness then I could see him, because I, my heart was, no, thankfully nobody really noticed. Once you start the National Anthem, then you have to go, and that would have, that would have been a very, very scary moment. But thank goodness it was just a drum roll. She apologised, all was good, and then I played. And then I remember a message coming down from the Duke of Edinburgh later thanking us for what wonderful music we had. So it kind of made the day a bit better, but, but that was it. But, um scary moments, there's always scary moments. I think scary moments are when you work with children very scary moments, when you work with bagpipes as well. And I had a great experience with bagpipes in Scotland. I really worked with them a lot. Um, and you got to know, and the Royal Signals as well, you really get to know what they need from you. Um, but you can never trust a piper to always guarantee to play it the same way. And there have been some really scary moments where pipers come in, and it happened in, actually it happened in Gibraltar, um, where we had a set, we were doing a big national day in Gibraltar, it's a big, big casemate square, there's about 4,000 people there, there was a rock concert later, but the Royal Gibraltar Regiment Band was starting this, uh, this whole thing off and we had the pipes from the Royal Gibraltar Regiment there. And we'd agreed that we were doing Highland Cathedral and we were doing Rosa Kelvin Grove or something. And I started the side drummers off, dum, do 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 dum, do 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 dum, like this, and I looked at the piper, he looked at me, I struck the piper to start playing, he started playing. But the interesting thing is he played a completely different tune than what the band had. And you can't stop a piper when they've started. Maybe a very good one, but not a normal piper. You can't just stop them and expect them to go, oh, we're playing the wrong tune, I'll try and change the tune. They just don't do that. I had a microphone because I was giving the, the concert and I thought, how do I, what do I do here? What, how do I get out of this? Because this is just, I I've got to stop. But then what do I say? So I stopped and, I, and what inspired me, I don't know, but I just went to the microphone and made a big fun about the fact that it's my birthday today and the band Sergeant Major had promised they were going to wind me up in some way and they thought, what better way? So, so I said, thanks guys, thanks a lot. That was, and everybody's just cheering, laughing. And, and then of course we started it, but at the time I'm really angry. I'm really like in, inside, I'm going, how, how could this happen? This is so terrible. Then we played the music, but then of course people came up to me afterwards, I didn't know it was your birthday, congratulations. <laughs> the whole thing was just completely covered. So I turned a nightmare into a really cool get out of jail.
I think one of the standouts was the uh, Euro 96 finals at Wembley when England didn't quite make it, but I think it was Czech Republic in the end. I can't remember the other. But I was one of the eight trumpets that went and stood in the, on, on Wembley and played a fanfare, and that was just awesome. Um, and also the FA Cup final, I th and again, I can't remember the year, but it was when Manchester United beat Liverpool, and as a Liverpool fan, it was amazing to go and, and sort of be in the tunnel with the players, and they had those really bad Armani suits, I don't know if you remember, and um, they were those great, they got so much hassle in the in the media for that, but, uh, but being a part of that, being feeling like a bit of a superstar with all the footballers and then, and then walking out as a mass band of the Lifeguards and Blues and Royals onto the pitch and, and be deafened by one set of supporters to your right and one set of supporters to the left. I don't remember the music we played, but it was just incredible. So they, they were really standout things, yeah.